Hello everyone. So one of the latest trends is to go back to OEM stereos in the Fox Body Mustang. Uh, if you noticed, these radios tend to sell for several hundred dollars on eBay. Um, and if you've also noticed that there's two distinct styles of radio that are available for the 87 to 93 Mustang. Uh, there's an older style that has um, dials that was available from 87 to 92. And then you have this later style here. There's a CD player and a tape deck um, that came in the 1993 Mustangs. These are a little bit more modern style. Um, they tend to be a little bit more desirable. And I've often seen the question asked of how can you retrofit this newer type of radio into an older car? These are different. Um, if you notice on the reverse side, these feature a slightly different hookup. Uh, you've got your power connections here, but your speakers actually run through this connector here, which goes to the amplifier. Um, as a result, the harness that connects to the back of the radio is different. Um, these are your connections that connect into the body harness. But as you can see, these are your two connections that connect into the back of the head unit. You have your main power wires here, and then you have your speaker wires here. The amplifier is also different. This is different from the football amp that was typically located in the center console. This particular amp is located under the passenger seat. And the harness has very unique connections that connect to the two connection points on the amplifier. So, how do you install this 1993 radio into an older car? Um, so despite the black interior in here, this is actually a 1988 Mustang. Um, forgive the appearance, I'm actually scraping up all the sound deadener to install kill mat. Um, but I figure now is a good time to show how these newer radios are installed. So this was a 1988, as I mentioned. Um, it did not come with the premium stereo. It came with the standard head unit that had speakers located in the dash and in the rear quarter area. Um, it did not have door speakers at all. Um, so the standard harness plug that we're all familiar with are these two uh, black and, well, the one black and one gray connector that you'll find on pretty much every 87 to 93 Fox Body Mustang. Now, it, depending on if you have premium sound, there is an additional harness under the dash. On the 87 to 92 cars, that additional harness plugs into these two connectors and connects to the football amp, amp that typically bolts to the bracket here. From there, that harness would have two plugs that plug into the back of the head unit. Now, on your 8792 cars, you're going to rip that all out completely. So you're going to unplug the football amp, pull that out, and you're going to unplug that intermediate harness to take you down to just these two bare wires here. Um, your, your main black, I believe your black is your power connections. No, excuse me. Black is speakers and your gray is your power connections for your radio. So what do you need to actually install this 1993 uh, stereo setup in an 87 to 92? Well, you need three main, three main parts. You need your amplifier. And here's the part number, F3ZF18T806. I've seen AA, AB, BA, um, so the last two digits may differ. You also need this unique harness that runs from the amplifier runs across the seat brace here, runs across the trans tunnel, and actually loops over these two studs here. Uh, that harness is going to have two female ends that, may, that match the gray and black connector that you may have in your harness. Um, as you can imagine, those are gonna plug into each other directly, so it's pretty simple and straightforward. And then that's gonna leave you with the male and um, female, well, the two male ends that connect into the back of the head unit. Now there is one big difference in the wiring of the early cars versus 93, and that is how the amplifier gets power. Um, so I know it might be a little tricky to um, see what I've done here, but basically I've jumped the constant power, which I believe is this yellow black wire that the head unit will receive when you turn the key to on. And I'm actually jumping that to this white wire, which is feeding the amplifier. Um, it might be a little tricky to see how I did that in this video, so I'm actually going to post a link 
to a forum that I did this post on that'll have the wiring diagram and a better picture showing exactly how I connected that. That's really the only wiring change. In 93, Ford used two fuses to feed both the radio and the amplifier. In 87 and 92, the amp and the head unit both get fed off one single fuse. In 93, Ford split that and, and powered the amplifier and the head unit separately. Now, I did actually jump it so that the amplifier is being powered from the same fuse that the head unit is being powered for, with. I never switched out the fuse, and I've never had a problem with that. Now, um, this is an 80-watt amplifier, which isn't much. Uh, it was back in 93, I guess, but now it's quite terrible, to be honest. Um, but even blasting as loud as I possibly can, uh, I really haven't had a problem with the single fuse powering both. But like I said, I'll put a link in the description better showing how I made that electrical connection. That is the only modification um, except for one other thing. Now, if your car was not a premium sound car and did not come with the door speakers, you're going to find that the plug for the door speaker it is present, but it's not going to be connected to anything. anything. The harness will actually be loose in here, so you can hook a speaker up and you can connect that speaker to the harness and the door but your plug is going to dead end right here and not connect to anything. The dash harness is actually different in these cars. I know that's not really a, an often said thing. Everyone assumes that harnesses are the same. Uh, but I've had this harness out of the car to reloom it. And I look for this. The two uh, speaker harness connections that connect to the door speakers is not present on cars that originally did not come a premium sound. Uh, on the cars that do have premium sound, and I've verified this by finding a few used harnesses and looking at them. Unfortunately, I couldn't procure one to put in this car. Um, there is a female plug that connects to this that actually uh, connects in parallel with the dash speakers up here. So for those of you that are not, do not have the door speaker harness here connected to your dash, you're going to have to get a connector for this plug, and it's a pretty common plug and um, make a harness that connects into the dash speakers to run the dash and the door speaker in parallel. Or you could do it any other way if you really want, but that's how I plan on doing it. If you need help finding a female plug for this, I believe that's a 97 to 2000 F-150 power window motor plug is compatible. Uh, unfortunately, they're kind of expensive. Uh, Ford sells them new for about These 20 These are actually the plugs that you need to get. Uh, like I said, uh, 97 to 2000, I believe, F-150 power window motor plugs. I don't know if I can read the part number off them, but I, if you look it up on Ford, these are about $20 a piece new. Um, but if you go to a junkyard, this is a pretty common 80s and 90s plug, so you should be able to find that. This will plug directly into the speaker harness, which is going to the door. And then you can tap these into your dash speakers. So just to recap here, adding the 93 premium sound system to earlier Mustangs is pretty easy if you can get your hands on three main components. Uh, first, you need the wiring harness, and this is a unique one-year-only 93 harness. Um, the part number for that harness F3ZB19B113 connects to your amplifier, which is part number F3ZF18T806. And from there, you're going to have two, I believe there's actually three options for head units. There's a cassette option that has a manual um, eject button. I forget what the other button is. And then you have this version here that actually has digital buttons for everything. Um, both were available in 93. I know 93 Cobras came with this style. I don't know the distribution of the other style. Um, but both these radios are unique in the sense that they have a special under tray that can actually be removed here. So those two screws, you can remove that under tray and swap it between radios. So any of the 87 to 92 radio bottoms can actually be taken off and swapped onto this head unit. But where you're going to run into difficulties is this faceplate has a square edge. Some F-150s came with this, um, but a lot of the other cars had a rounded edge. If you attempt to put a rounded edge faceplate in with the cubby, it won't look right. Uh, same with the CD player. The CD player came in a lot of vehicles. In fact, the one that's unique to the Mustang has a clock button here. Um, actually, both Mustangs here. On some Fords that have a clock elsewhere, this is actually a sixth preset here instead. 
But the same thing here, the bottom panel is removable. This is actually a contour radio. This is not an original 93 uh, radio, but I swapped the faceplate and added the bottom tray. Uh, but it's a 97 or 98 contour CD player. Uh, date of manufacture, 99, so 99 contour. Uh, but I swapped the face plate on the bottom. Sorry, swapped the bottom plate and I added the correct 93 style square face plate. I happened to find uh, a broken radio. Um, so you can assemble these if you can find the parts. The parts are getting hard to find. But what is unique, uh -huh. what is also important to note here is to run these 93 radios, there's a shorting plug here that plugs into the top. This is meant to run a CD changer. Um, so you can run a CD changer off these. I've never tried because it's a specific 93 only CD changer. I believe an equivalent version came in the 93 Lincoln Mark 8. But since you're not running a CD changer, it's very important you have this shorting plug installed. Otherwise, you're going to have volume issues. So definitely if you pick up a radio, make sure that these two shorting plugs are in place. Uh, but other than that, that is all you need to, in order to install a 1993 premium sound system in an 87 to 92 Mustang.